Welcome to episode 36 of Discovering Nagasaki from Local. My name is Chad. In my ongoing weekly vlogs, you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. This week, Denise Rollheiser, Daniel Hazen, and Kathy Garrett were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. Thank you for answering my challenging questions. The first question from last week was, how many pots and pans did I use on the stove for last week's cooking demo? The answer is four pots and pans. The second question from last week was, what does the letter S stand for on Tanaka Sign's sign? The answer is Shu Matsubara. The spring weather in Japan has brought with it many new flowers. These camellia blossoms in Omura Park usually arrive just before the cherry blossoms. These azalea blossoms have just started to come out, and the iris seedlings behind them will be in full bloom four weeks from now. Omura Park is famous for its cherry blossoms. These blossoms will be in full bloom by next weekend. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group W kanji root particles include Ritual Lance Substitute Weapon Injure Loom Own Righteous Grow Rear Cover Become and superficial. I will cover group X kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. Please support this vlog channel by clicking on the subscribe button below, ringing the adjacent bell for update notifications, and clicking the thumbs up button. In today's vlog, I will show you how I bake. Yuki Fruits Pan de Compagne, an organic fruit buns in our bakery. I will also give you a short tour of the station and harbor in Sonogi. Let's get started. In order to bake organic fruit buns, I will use 50 grams of sugar, 13 grams of salt, 80 grams of organic yeast, 350 grams of water, 150 grams of whole wheat flour, 720 grams of regular flour, 75 grams of Amanatsu marmalade, 15 grams of lemon marmalade, 145 grams of raisins, and 45 grams of dried cranberries. After eight minutes in the mixer, I will allow the dough to rise at room temperature until it completely fills its plastic container. This is what the dough looks like just prior to forming. The dough is very soft and filled with fruit. Now I will weigh out 16 portions of dough, each weighing 109 grams. That's the first one. Now that I have 16 dough portions, I will carefully form each bun by hand. I need to make sure that the rounded top surface of the bun is studded with fruit sections. Then I need to pinch off the edges of the dough on the bottom portion of the bun. It's important to make the fruit visible on top of the bun. It takes more time to do this than with most of our other buns, but it looks more appetizing. Once I have the first dough portion on a silicone sheet, I need to repeat this process 15 times to fill the tray. Before I put this tray of dough into the proofer, I will spray on some water with this spray bottle. That should do it. 
The dough will now be allowed to rise for about two hours inside the proofer. We can put up to seven trays in this proofer. The temperature inside is about 40 degrees Celsius and a tray of heated water keeps it quite humid. As you can see right now, there are many types of dough rising inside this proofer. After two hours in the proofer, it's time to take out the dough. As you can see, the dough has risen quite a bit. I'll set the tray on this counter and once again spray the dough with some water. Now I'll sprinkle some more whole wheat flour on each bun before I put the tray in the oven. These buns will bake at 215 degrees Celsius for about 18 minutes. These are some of the emoji buns we made today. The oven timer will go off in about 6 seconds. I'll turn the timer off before it starts ringing. The fruit buns are kitsune edo, which means fox colored in English. I'll just set the pan on the counter to let it cool down. 215 degrees is a little too hot to handle. We bake most of our bread, including the emoji buns, at this temperature. These fruit buns taste as good as they look. I'm now standing in front of Sanogi train station in the town of Nishi Sanogi. This train station was first opened in 1898, 123 years ago. It's quite small and only about 350 people use this station every day. As you can see it's wheelchair accessible. It looks like one of the trains at this station is just departing on its way to Omura, Isahaya and eventually Nagasaki City. From here, Sanogi Station is about 400 meters in this direction. The store with the gold colored sign is a bookstore and next to it is a fishing tackle shop. A short walk from here and beyond that red vending machine is Sanogi's oldest harbor. Notice the small barber shop on the left. And the narrow back road on the right. Next to the sign up ahead is a metal garbage drop box. It keeps the crows away from the trash. This small sign here describes the historical significance of this harbor. For whalers from the Goto Islands, cargo shipments from Nagasaki to ports all over Kyushu, and traders from Holland. It also mentions that two famous German physicians, Siebold and Kempfer, used this harbor more than 300 years ago. Construction of this stone harbor took place in the Genrokunin-Kan era, between 1688 and 1704. This sign on the right indicates that this end of the harbor is designated as a pleasure boat refuge area, and that this area can only be used in the event of a typhoon. Although there are a few pleasure boats here, most of these vessels are local fishing boats. Even though this is a small harbor, it is impressive because of its age and the enormous effort it took to build this stone dock by hand. Behind this stone tori is a small Shinto harbor shrine, the Asaka Shrine. There are two narrow access roads on either side of this harbor and it makes it easy for locals to jump on their boats and head out into Omota Bay. Sanogi Harbor is on the east coast of Omota Bay and it's only about 14 kilometers from here to the west coast of Omota Bay. It doesn't take long to travel from here to Sasebo or to Gitsu by boat. It's actually much faster than driving or taking the train. On my right is a larger fishing boat and a concrete extension of the original harbor. The pier along this natural 
inlet protects the boats in this harbor from large storm waves that occasionally develop in Omoto Bay. On the right, in the distance, is a large concrete factory, and behind this factory you can see the mountains that border the east coast of Omoto Bay. You get a great view of the coastline from this location. Notice the huge concrete hexapods that line the side of the harbor. In this direction is Omoto and Nagasaki Airport. Although it is possible to travel by boat from this port to Nagasaki and the Goto Islands, you need to travel through the narrow and treacherous Sakai Strait on the north side of Omoto Bay. Today there isn't a wave to be seen in the harbor or on the bay. This is a great place to take a walk, explore, and watch a sunset. This is a different view of the concrete hexapods along this harbor. All of them came from that concrete factory that I showed you earlier. They're quite impressive, aren't they? Now I'll show you around the Asaka Shrine at this harbor. There is a small park here with a few stone benches for visitors to sit on. This shrine has a steep ceramic roof made of Kawada tiles and in front of its entrance is a traditional Shiminawa or woven rope that is made from straw or hemp. In the Shinto religion, the Shiminawa is used for ritual purification. The traditional white paper streamers referred to as shide are hanging below. As I exit this small park, I will go under the tori in front of this shrine. You can see that it is also decorated with a Shiminawa and Shide. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, which four fruits did I use in my fruit buns? Second, what is the name of the Shinto shrine at the harbor that I showed you in Sonogi? Be the first to correctly answer both of these questions in the comments section below. I will announce the first three people who do so at the beginning of episode 37. You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. And you can watch all of my vlog episodes on the online YouTube playlist. Today's B-roll involved baking, so in episode 37, my B-roll will involve farming. See you next week.